Hi everyone and welcome to the Roundup for August. I hope all is well and people are safe and looking after themselves in this weird and wonderful time. As you can see, we are still in this new normal of working from home. My name is Jack Sims and I'm one of the corporate dealers here at MoneyCorp. I'm going to give you a bit of a Roundup for the month of August, which hopefully might be of some interest and helpful, while also mentioning what to look out for in the coming months and year ahead. Firstly, looking at the major currencies and the highs and lows, we have seen continued volatility again this month. Starting with GBP Euro, we have seen highs of 111.98 and a low of 110.15. For cable, we have seen a high of 132.84 and a low of 129.81. And finally, looking at Euro US dollar, we have seen a high of 119.66 and a low of 116.95 at the time of this recording. The US dollar has been under pressure for much of the month. Against the euro having touched above 119, we have seen it come back slightly, but we're still testing the upper limit. While sterling at one point has hit a new high for the whole year against the dollar. There doesn't seem to make much let up at the moment, and we continue to see the dollar struggle. We saw the minutes for the US Federal Reserve July policy meeting published earlier this month which demonstrated increased concern amongst Fed officials over the pace of the US growth in the second half of the year, with ongoing tensions with China and the current health crisis. Given the worldwide pandemic we are in at the moment and the uncertainty around a cure and also the second wave, this has been a major contributor to the economic activity and inflation in the near term and possesses considerable risk to the medium term outlook. Also, as expected this past month, the Bank of England left monetary policy unchanged. The Bank of England's policymakers acknowledged that recent economic data had mostly pointed to a stronger than expected initial rebound, compared with the slump in the economic activity seen in March and April at the beginning of the lockdown. That being said, there is still a long road to recovery. We are, after all, back in a recession. It was noted that GDP was only likely to reach back to its end of 2019 level in Q4 2021, a little later than previously projected. There are still three main factors of focus from this month and moving forward until the end of the year and potentially beyond, those being coronavirus, US elections, and the dreaded subject of Brexit. Firstly, looking at coronavirus, there have been more than 320,000 confirmed cases so far in the UK, and more than 40,000 people have died according to recent government figures. A further easing in lockdown restrictions were announced this month, where we saw theatres, casinos, the beauty sector and bowling alleys finally allowed to reopen. We have also seen that people planning to go abroad have been warned that no travel is risk free and they should factor in potentially having to self isolate for 14 days upon their return. In August, we have seen the likes of Belgium, France, Netherlands, Croatia and Austria added to this list. In a bid to contain the virus, it was also announced that penalties for violators of social distancing rules would be doubled. The Eat Out to Help Out scheme giving diners up to 50% off their bill comes to a close this month as well. The scheme was designed to boost the struggling hospitality industry and more than 35 million discounted meals were ordered in the first two weeks alone, according to government figures. The government set aside a further 500 million pounds to fund the scheme with about 80% of the hospitality firms not trading in the whole of April, this gave the hospitality sector its much needed boost. Looking ahead to the US elections in November, we saw former Vice President Joe Biden formally confirmed as the Democratic candidate for November's presidential election. Biden heads into the general election campaign with a clear lead in opinion polls over President Trump, but with under 70 days to go until the election, there's still plenty of time to narrow the gap. We also know that Trump was behind in the polls in 2016, yet still won. So it can all be taken with a pinch of salt at this stage. We're going to see how the virus affects both campaigns and whether there will be any effect on the campaign rallies in the coming months. Lastly, looking at Brexit, it was confirmed another round of trade negotiations had concluded with no real progress being made. And negotiators on both sides displaying an increased frustration confirming that we will have to wait for a final breakfall. The EU's chief negotiator, Michael Bernier, said no progress whatsoever had been made on fisheries and that the two sides remained far from agreeing a deal. 
Now this news is a negative one for Sterling, as it suggests weeks of uncertainty lies ahead with much more of the same negative headlines on the lack of progress likely. The whole deal or no deal is likely to resume its ugly face. Whilst the UK looks for a September agreement, it must be noted, it is ultimately the EU that sets the deadlines. EU leaders will be meeting at an EU Council summit in October, and as is typically the case, the big decisions are only ever made at these summits. Therefore, October still remains a best case target for this to be dealt with. At the time of this recording, we also have the Jackson Hole Symposium about to take place. So comments and speeches from central bankers and other influential officials could create significant market volatility that I'm obviously yet to report on. So that's it from me for the month of August. Please look out for the September review coming next month. And if you want to receive daily, weekly or monthly updates from Money Corp, please subscribe via the link below in the comments. Thank you very much for listening and please stay safe.